On this episode of The Trend Talk, oh no, she didn't. Did Belle just slap Naive? We sit down with the stunt woman who shows us how to do it, Crystal Santos. Also, comedian Maria Costa tells us about shades of macho. And meet the man behind the popular reality show, Vanderpump Rules. Welcome to another episode of The Trend Talk. We have a jam-packed show full of action and lots of laughs. But girl, look at you. You got your pretty woman boots on. The come get me kind of boots. <laughs> Damn, Belle. You're lucky you're not my boss because in this climate, technically, I could say that that sexual harassment, I mean, all of these allegations with all of these powerful people are coming out and that conversation is is at the table right everywhere everywhere you well, hear in it's... this climate yes i mean right. anything that women hear that they feel is sexual harassment they could accuse people of sexual right. harassment for that but you know the dictionary defines sexual harassment as a typically towards women and in the workplace or other professional or social settings and it involves making of unwanted sexual remarks or wow. obscene remarks. Well, I definitely feel like there is different degrees of harassment. For example, if I'm walking down the hall and a coworker looks at me up and down, I could technically say that that was offensive and that was that I was being sexually harassed when maybe but you couldn't technically. That doesn't even make sense, but some women no, do. No, but some women That's do. That's exactly right. And the guy could be like I'm gay. I was just looking at her shoes. And that's obviously not sexual harassment. Yes. But then there's the other end where the boss is constantly flirting with you, maybe even asking you for physical contact, a massage, a drink after work. To me, that's, that I think real, that is sexual harassment. sexual harassment. But I'm super happy. Either way, whichever, however way you feel about it, I'm really happy that uh, this conversation is being had at all different levels, not just at the workplace, but in the news. Um, I'm really right? proud of the women that have spoken up. Right. You know, because it's really opened up the floodgate. Right. Because in just, just the time that when the first person came out against Harvey Weinstein, right. within a week, within three weeks, 11 men have been accused of sexual harassment it in only wow. in the entertainment business okay you have people like um ben affleck that screenwriter james toback mm -hmm. um kevin spacey it doesn't just go m men with women right. it's, it's w men on men right and also the president of the united states number 41 which is um george, george. bush george hw bush who was accused of grabbing someone's rump Wow. While in the wheel Maybe wheelchair. it was an accident, but the, I mean, that's, that's exactly what we're talking about. The lines sometimes are, are getting blurred, but I think the positive thing is, as I mentioned, women aren't being afraid to come out and talk about it, especially like, for example, women in Hollywood were always scared of, of accusing men because they didn't want to be blacklisted, but there's a list celebrities. I mean, even Angelina Jolie, Kate Blanchett recently tweeted saying, just because we want to look sexy doesn't mean we want to bed you. And she didn't say bed. She said another word, but mm -hmm. which I don't want to say. <laughs> so this is good. I'm glad we are having this because then other women, at maybe maybe not celebrities, but at the workplace. Uh, well, now it's it's gone beyond entertainment. You know, right. it's now into politics. Um, they just had an uh, an event or a rally in Sacramento, in California, where all of these women signed this this. Uh, letter that's saying you know we it happens here too and right. we don't want to we, we want it to stop right so you know it existed with bill bill clinton it was way back then well but nobody was really speaking out in mass and then when they did speak out look at what happened with monica lewinsky i mean she was sacrificed in the media and i think that's why a lot of women were scared because they didn't want to be a monica lewinsky where she was if you look back now she was a victim of sexual harassment. She was, she was an intern. She was in a, a position where uh, Bill Clinton was obviously the power, you know, had power over her and, and was this, in, I guess, in charge of the the country at the time. But look at people. But, don't, people don't want to believe but, what they don't want to believe. Look at um, um, Corey Feldman, a child oh, right, actor right. who has been saying for years that there's a pedophile ring in Hollywood. And she he was even on The View and Barbara Walters was like incredulous and right. and saying like, are you saying that people in the industry is going? Yes. And she was like, 
No, you know, I, wow. her attitude was, I don't believe it. And see, this is proof that you have to sometimes pay attention to these people. Because right. why would he come out and say that? He's a guy basically admitting to the world that he has been sexually molested by another man. Right. Now, with all of this coming out, we realize that we're not that advanced. You know, there's still sexual harassment. There's Women are still considered second-class citizens and also paid less. And so this was of the positive side of all these women coming out this is what we're getting is that now they're not going to stay quiet anymore they're make these women were strong and we should thank them for coming out so this is women a, power this is a good <laughs> example of women who are not scared of speaking right. up and are using their voice for good strong women leading by example that's right and speaking of that we have a very strong woman crystal santos we're going to tell you why she's so strong you're not going to want to miss this coming up after the break Kill just about anything. Our experts forge a path through the ancient weapons of Africa with a deadly czar throwing dagger. Ah, that blade can take someone's leg off. And the side splitting Shotel sword. Stay sharp. Man at Arms, Art of War. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Crystal Santos about one of the only action actresses in Hollywood that is Latina. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the Trend Talk. Thank you for having me. I love everything you've done. And I actually remember watching that episode where you were the stunt double for Kate del Castillo in Weeds. You're not a stunt uh, person anymore or a stunt double anymore, but you used to be. How does that work? Like, how do they make you look so much like the actress that you're portraying? Well, well it's interesting. It's like, you know, I transitioned into lead actress and uh, ensemble cast. I'm on that show, Man at Arms, Art of War. When I used to double, it was very interesting because you have to look like the actress. So right. they put the wig on you. Um, they've had to pad me up to, for some bigger actresses. Right? Wow. <laughs> and, and they do. They really like it. your the wardrobe. There's a lot that goes into it. You study their body movements mm -hmm. so that you can mimic them. And it's interesting about that particular job. I was called in because I'm really good with underwater stunts. Mm. And they needed someone to float dead in the water, face down, and they were going to put the pull cover over the body. And then they could see the tube. They gave me a breathing tube and they could see it. But I can hold my breath for such a long time. So I told them to go ahead and remove it. And it was no problem for me for several minutes to be wow. under the pool cover without a uh, breathing apparatus. Wow. Uh, so that's, again, lots of training. So everything I do, like stunt, stunts wise, because I do all my, my own stunts and everything I act in. I was going to ask her about your new show, Man at Arms, which actually No, but I want to ask her about the slap. The oh, famous that's slap. Right, that's right. Because okay. is there like a, a school that you go to for stunt double? Because I want to learn how to do that slap. And then there's... Oh, well, there's a, a couple different levels of slaps, right? There's the normal slap, and then there's the telenovela slap. That yeah. They could like, literally, literally how slap to do you that. to a different uh, country. Yes. Yeah, how do you do that? Well, you know, yeah, you, we actually do stunt train. So uh, coming from professional fighting into stunt fighting, it's all about distance control. So if I'm going to come as close to you as possible, right? say I'm gonna slap, slap you mm -hmm. so what I could do is come across like this right and I didn't touch you though uh -huh. so but it's up to you to sell y'all whip your head you know so when we come like this okay. slap ah. whip your head right okay well, did, did and then look believable and then, and then yeah. the telenovela oh no <laughs> that was like, your yeah. head will oh, no. spin like okay. the exorcist let can me you... see if you could do it okay. okay you're gonna slap me so okay. yeah what what tell her what she should do Okay. So, wait, wait. So she's gonna come at me, and then I, I turn that way. Correct? Huh? Ready? Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. So, so turn that way. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Use your hair. <laughs> oh, she I added did a special effect. Did you hear that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that's why you sell it. Exactly. <laughs> that, was good. that was good. Exactly. Wow, well, you know, Belle. So you that never, one's going down in the you, books. You, you never, slapped me on television. Yeah, yeah. And you never touch the person. It's a matter of camera angles. And. I, what I love about your career is that you're parlaying in so many different things. Now you're actually like one of the co-hosts of this amazing show, right? Called yes. Man at Arms with Danny Trejo. Yes, Talk to us El Rey that. TV. Yes. El Rey ne Network. Yeah. Talk yeah. to us about that. Well, Man at Arms, Art of War, it's on El Rey Network. And what I love is the show, they actually build weapons, ancient weapons. Mm -hmm. And I specialize in, in various weapons of ancient civilizations to modern times. 
And what they do is they we take we study war, we study what the theoretical application of the, these weapons were, and then we put tests together. And I take theory, and I show everybody how to do all the bad things. Wow. <laughs> but you know, I saw that you use like bags of like sand, yes, and you use the weapons, and then you use them how you studied they were used yes and and these shows are like just off the hook uh, people love these well does it know, come from like playing video games and using those kinds of weapons what why well, is this so they, well the reason why i personally studied war my whole life was i was in school i was probably ah, fifth grade maybe fourth you know when we learn about the conquistadors coming to mexico mm -hmm. and overtaking the aztecs it really stuck with me. I, I, I grew up in a school of predominantly Mexican children. And when you read this, and both my parents are from Mexico, you think, how can these group of people on a boat take over an entire empire? Like, they slaughtered them. How is it even possible? Right. But I also, I, 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 that's what's fascinating about the show, because you, you get into that. But I want to yeah, talk about... We did about, an episode on the Aztecs. Yes. Yes. I want to talk about some of your upcoming projects. Yes. Um, you're you're a producing. You're also gone from, you know, stunt double to lead actress, and now you're producing some of your shows, right? Yes, I have. Well, actually, ne next month is premiering a film that I'm a lead in called May Day. Mm -hmm. um, right now, in select theaters, is paying Mr. McGetty. Um, we're about to start a new other movie called Daylight, and I do produce uh, the Hollywood Social Lounge KMUT at mm -hmm. Morning News, ABC right. News, with. The ho our host is Aaron Sanchez. Well, thank you so much. We're running out of time, yes. but it's so amazing to see a woman that's strong and well, powerful, not just on the outside, but on the inside too, because uh, obviously everything that you do is, is very powerful and in your great example for other Latinas out there and other women in general well, that, I, that want to make things happen. I hope to inspire women. And I, give us your social media handles. Where can yes. we follow you? Um, on Instagram is official Crystal Santos. Yes. Man of Arms is starting the second season? Yes, it is. Okay, awesome. So. awesome. Okay, so now we're going from fierce to funny. Coming up, comedian Maria Costa joins us. <laughs> Go to Starbucks and I want to order a caffeine. And the barista asks me, Do I want a mocha frappuccino latte macchiato? I don't go to Starbucks to learn Italian. I go for the free Wi Fi. Doing the same thing every day, all day. I put the screw in the boat, and the boat, and the hole, and the clamp back on the screw, and then the screw girl. I'm starting to get nightmares to screw. And I am very happy to introduce comedian Maria Costa, who's created several one woman shows. She's traveled across the country and she's thrilled audiences with all of her. Her performances. Welcome, Maria, to the Welcome, Trend Talk. Maria. Okay, Maria is going to be joining us later. I am so over her. She's always trying to take over the set, always trying to take over interviews. It's time for my spotlight. Hello, my name is Gigi. I'm a fortune teller. Call me if you need your fortune told. That's right. Oh, honey, I got a fortune for you. I see something in your future. I see death. No, no, no. Don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. Maybe you're not gonna die today, or maybe you're not gonna die tomorrow, but eventually you are gonna die. <laughs> Who, Who are you? Who are you? Gigi, hello. Gigi. From Maria's new show, Shades of Macho. Oh, okay. well, you know, I, 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 I really like Gigi, but I think someone has hijacked our set. Can you guys please get Maria? Yeah. Hello. We, we, you, we oh, booked Maria Costa, not Gigi. Are you serious? Are, are you calling security? Yes. Oh my what? gosh. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here for the interview, but you know, whatever. Okay, we need Maria back. Yeah, we need Maria back. Maria! <laughs> that was so cool! That was from yeah. your show, Shades of Shades the Macho. Of Machos. Yeah, oh my it's coming God. up. It's a spinoff of my original show, Macho Men and the Women Who Love Them, which is toured in over 100 cities and sold out the Kodak Theater. And wow. you do all kinds of different impressions, not just Gigi. Uh, walk us through a few. Oh, there's, there's so many. Um, Let's see, there's Gigi and there's Feinstein, and she is just fabulous. I love that color on you. It's just beautiful, honey. <laughs> you do different ethnicities, right? Yes, I do. I, and I, men. But men as well. I do. I'm my father, and he does the macho rules. The rule number one, men don't cry. Men make all men cry. 
<laughs> you know, so he's one of my characters as well. And then I grew up in Detroit, so of course Detroit is African, eighty um, percent African American. So uh -huh. my girl, girl, she loves Macho Man. You know, you you like Macho Man, I like the I Benjamins. Like hey, <laughs> <laughs> but you started um, your career well. First, you started writing when you were a young, mm -hmm. young little kid, and then you were at PBS, and you started, and you were actually pitched them shows, and they bought them. Tell us about starting out in PBS. Yes, that was uh, that was amazing because I came on as on air talent, mm -hmm. and within a month of me working there, I said, you know, I want to start writing and producing my own shows, and they were like, well, whatever, your talent, your nineteen. How old years were you at nineteen? I was nineteen, wow. yeah, uh -huh. and they just were not trying to hear that, and so I wrote up a proposal which was all about uh, young black and Latina girls and body image and trying to live up to unrealistic standards of beauty. Uh -huh. And so they really liked the proposal. They said, we'll give you a shot. We'll let you do a two minute segment. They really loved my segment. And then they promoted me to show producer wow. and allowed me to do 30 minute shows. Which oh was my goodness. And what were those shows about the same concept? Did you interview people? What yes. did the show look like? Mm -hmm. I would inter I interviewed Edward James Almos. Um, if I say some of them, I'll, I'll age myself. <laughs> well, uh, Eddie's been around forever and he's still here. So. No, not Eddie, but yeah, some of, anyway, but um, kid, was it Kid and Play? Kid and Play. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I, I interviewed a lot of different people on there. And then I did a show about hip hop. They flew me to New York. I interviewed African Bambada, who's the founder of hip hop. Oh. Rocksteady, who their uh, break dancing group, who actually started break dancing. So uh -huh. it was just really an amazing experience. And they funded anything I wanted to do basically, but it was PBS. Wow, this is music to my ear, yeah. my ears. They don't do that in Hollywood. And yet here you right. were doing it back when you were like in your teens. Amazing. But you're yeah. kind of doing it now though with Mundo Flix because now you're actually kind of doing the same thing, but with the streaming service, right? Talk to us a little bit about that. You're, you're producing content for them. Yes, Mundo Flix is a uh, streaming service, as you said. It's kind of like the Latin Netflix, if you will. So there's lots of programming that's available from Latin America and here in uh, America as well, but in Spanish and English. Mm -hmm. And uh, we produce a show called Viva America. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a Tracy Ullman's Tracy Takes On that was on HBO for a while, which I play about 10 different characters and I take on social issues like immigration, racism, wow. but it's all in a, a funny context because I really do believe that you can make people laugh uh, and you can say just about and anything. And inform them as well at the same time. Yeah, inform them, elevate the way that they think. You mm -hmm. can bring a message, but you don't have to beat people over the head with it. You can say it in a funny way. So when is the show uh, getting, is this a touring show as well? Viva America? No, that is a one camera show. Uh, and my husband and I, we raised the funds. The Kresge wow. Foundation actually fully funded Viva America. Same, what is the Kresge to, Foundation? That is uh, the largest foundation out of Michigan. Uh, they've funded several large um, projects, like nonprofit projects. Oh. And because this was about racism and they were funding Detroit artists to come back to the city and do projects and sort of revitalize uh, Michigan mm -hmm. and Detroit, I was one of the artists that were funded. So uh, they funded two films as well as two plays that I produced in Michigan and we have full ownership of them. And I love wow. everything that, that you're doing, especially that you're owning your own content because yeah. I really think that's the way to go, own your own content, right? Talk to us a little bit about that. Is it difficult, you think, for people, independent producers that wanna create their own stuff? How difficult is it to embark on that? Yeah, it's not an easy journey. <laughs> yes, because fundraising itself, I mean, is something else. Just going out and trying to raise the funds and getting people excited about your project. But I think if you stick with it and try to get creative, like no one would have thought to go to a foundation that funds nonprofit projects to try to do something in entertainment. True, but right. because of the context as a woman of color yeah. who's empowering other women of color and who's... Um, bringing a voice to the Detroit market and putting Detroit in a positive light. You know, that was the context that I pitched to them. So so where can we find out more information for our audience who wants to find out about more about you, more about your shows? Where can they? Where can they? Sure. Uh, Yes, well, they can go to www. Do people say www. No, they don't. Anyway, <laughs> you do. <laughs> there you go. MariaCosta.com, or you can hit me up on Instagram at D R E A L Maria Costa, or Facebook, of course, same thing, D Real Maria Costa. Thank you so yeah. much. And before I we say goodbye, you are half Danish, correct? D or yeah. 
No. Denmark. From <laughs> Denmark or Danish? No, no, I'm Hungarian. Hungarian. Half uh, Hungarian, half Cuban. I call myself a hungry Cuban. <laughs> and uh, Viva America talks about my Hungarian background, actually. I'm oh, yeah. very excited it's, to see that. We'll check it out at Mundo Flix. Thank Mundo you Flix, so much, Flix, Maria. Yeah. And don't forget to watch Shades of Macho coming up, which is my new show. When is that my coming up? My new one in March. Okay. And we're filming the comedy special, and we're also going on tour in March. So. Awesome. Well, Sounds Shades like a plan. And coming up, speaking of macho men, we have a man. I don't think he's a macho man, but he's a really good entrepreneur, actor, model, and he looks like George Clooney. We have him here in the studio. So coming up, an interview with a man of all trades. We'll tell you why. Hi, welcome back to the Trend Talk. It's time to add a little testosterone to the set. We have with us now Guillermo Zapata. He was a model, uh, he's an actor, and now he's an entrepreneur. Please welcome <laughs> What a pleasure. Guillermo trendy, Zapata. I, I came trendy. I mean, and I look suppose, at you, and that's look at you great. ladies. Yeah. And you're not, you're not bad to look at. Everyone calls you the George Clooney, the Latino George Clooney. I, have, I hear that before, and <laughs> I, like I, that? I take that as a compliment. Yeah. Yes, yes, of, of course. course. So my, yeah. I have a lot of uh, respect for Clooney, so but that's, what that's I very good. Most about you is your story. I can't believe that you came from Argentina to this country with practically just your suitcase. You started washing dishes, and now you own one of the trendiest restaurants in LA. Right. Sir. right. Tell us about that journey when you decided you were going to come from Argentina over here. Right. Well, I'm going to make it sh short, but uh, you know, just to <laughs> clarify that, yes, I grew up in Buenos Aires, Argentina, with a beautiful family. My father is a famous uh, artist. You know, singing. Give us his and, name. Uh, Rodolfo Zapata. Uh -huh. It's a legend, Argentinian legend, for sure. So I grew up in upscale, you know, middle uh, upscale family with the love of the family and with the public and I study uh, acting. I started working in soap operas and in uh, modeling and acting. And uh, at the age of 22, I, I always want to come to Hollywood to see the city. You know, I mean, I have something special for that city since I was a kid mm -hmm. to see it, you know, to feel it. And that's why at 22 years old, I, I bought a ticket and told my family, uh, I need to go and get a picture with uh, the Hollywood sign. But well. I'm curious, how did you meet Lisa Vanderpump? Because their reality show, which is based on your restaurant, right. Vanderpump Rules, has been a total hit. I think it's in their sixth season. Right. Something. It's something that you should look for that, you know. But prior to that, you got to be ready. I opened Sur uh -huh. in 1998. So 1992, I was a dishwasher. In 1998, I was able to open my own place. That's wow. an accomplishment. So this is another step that you need to do because at that time I was, I remember I was a manager in a restaurant. Uh -huh. Very comfortable. I was 27 years old. I was in that time. Salary, I was comfortable with my own place. And you know, but then you have an opportunity to say, well, somebody want to be a part of you and open a restaurant, which is, well, it wasn't listened in that time. So, but um, you have to start all over again in a place that you don't know if it's going to work or not. So sometimes you have to make decision and put everything in there. So, so I took the decision and I opened Sur. Wow. So you opened Sur and right. now they joined you. In 2005. Oh, okay, I so see. how much of all the chaos that goes on in Vanderpump Rules? Right. Because there's a lot of, of hair pulling. We did a fake slap, but I think there's real <laughs> slapping going on in the show. How much right. of it is, is real and how much of it is kind it, of it is up? It is real. We're talking about it now. It's going to be season number six. Right. So, you know, uh, season number one, number two. You know, you need to adapt yourself and... Uh, and, and that did environment, you, but the, yes, it, it is but real. Having the show, the reality show, Vanderpump Rules, how did that affect the business of SOAR? Did it, I mean, were the cameras kind of a hindrance sometimes? Did, did business boom because of the show? That was another challenge that I want in my life, you know, right. decision. When we're right. talking about you have to have the vision to say, well, it will work or no. And then you have to put everything because the restaurant was going fantastic without right. the show. Right. You know, but if you want, and as a local business, you know, mm -hmm. but if you want to go for the dimension that the suit is right, right now, you have to say, well, if we're going to bring cameras, it can be good, but I I don't think everybody's going to be happy, customers, you know, Correct. about right. that. So I took the decision. I said, well, let's, with my wife, Natalie, you know, we, we say, okay, let's work in, I'm, gonna, I'm like a pilot, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to be there controlling everything and make it happen. So yeah, cameras came, customers were not too happy about it try to explain that, you know, this is something that we're going to do and and it worked. You know, I said, you know, don't worry about it. Won't film me if you don't want to with the film. But the camera, uh, like you guys, you know, it, it worked uh, very comfortable at source. So yeah. it, I feel comfortable. I feel like, okay, well, I can handle that. Well, that was a vision because a lot of restaurateurs would say, oh, no, I'm not going to, that's going to hinder my business. Right. But on the other side, I was an actor and I grew up in the, in, 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 in the right. business. So I knew that 
I have that skill behind the cameras, in front of the camera, and I know the restaurant business. So I think I can handle that. All right. And then yeah. it worked, you know, when yeah. as soon as it came to TV. Plus, I have, you know, as a partner, Lisa Vanderpump, which is, you know, it gave you something extra. You know, it's, it's right. like if you have cards, you know, you give the, the special card you have. You yeah. know? So, so um, tell us where uh, where Sur is, the restaurant. Where is it for people that Oh, uh, yes. Know. It is in West Hollywood. And um, it is on Robertson and Melrose. Okay. So it's, it's a trendy place, you know, the area. The right. trendiest. The trendiest. <laughs> it is, yeah, right. for sure. It's a famous corner in there. And for 2,000 square feet, now 10,000 square feet. You, you, I almost have 100 employees in there. So, uh, you know, that's what I'm talking about, a vision and desire and think you can do it. You know, well, we're going to go visit you. I've already been to your restaurant, you, by the way. You? It's beautiful. Yeah. And thank you. Uh, we'll yeah. go again. Thank so, you, thank so, you much so much. Thank you. What a pleasure to be with oh, you guys and, oh, and you. give a little more story in that. And oh. I will looking forward to see you at Sur. Anytime. Of course. Definitely. All right. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Well, don't go away because we still have a lot more of the Trend Talk. It's time to say goodbye, but I want to say thank you to all our guests who came to the Trend Talk and shared a bit of their world. And our social media shout out for the Trend Talk Trendsetter goes to a motivational speaker, radio personality, and influencer, Raquel Cordova, also known as Roxy. Through her organization's Amiga for the Soul, she inspires lots of Latinas with videos like these. Welcome to another episode of Conversations in the Kitchen with Roxy. Remember to follow us on social media on The Trend Talk Show because if it's trending, we're, we're talking! talking.